afternoon, everybody. I'm Olivier Ankovec from uh, ACI Europe, and I'd like to welcome you to this uh, webinar exclusively for you, our members. I'm delighted so many of you could join us today. I think we have more than 180 people registered for this webinar. So as our industry takes its first uh, tentative yet determined steps into the recovery phase, and I think we can also speak a little bit more with confidence about the post-COVID reality, we continue, of course, to look at the immediate impact on operations and also the economic reality of this crisis. Um, I just looked at our latest figures as of Friday. Uh, we have the figures up to 28th of June. And uh, since 1st of January to 28th of June, Europe's airports have lost 748 million passengers. That's a drop in passenger numbers of 65%. And I must say that since uh, 15th of, of, of June, when uh, Schengen started, the Schengen area started to, to lift uh, intra-Schengen travel restrictions, uh, we thought the recovery could progress a little bit more uh, quicker than it has. Uh, the feedback we get from a lot of airports is that uh, the, the figures are improving, there's more flights, there's more passengers, but it's still uh, quite much slower than what they had anticipated. So, of course, uh, at the same time, uh, we, we also try to project ourselves into the future, uh, look at how the virus will change and restructure our industry. We know many of the changes will be uh, fundamental and will be permanent and that uh, airports will need to adapt. I think it's pretty clear to everybody that the airport economic and business model will need to adapt, uh, reflecting uh, uh, of course, much decreased passenger flows in the future, but also increased competition. And uh, I think at the same time, as we are rethinking the future, what we will see is an acceleration of a number of trends that were already emerging before the crisis, and trends that uh, by no means are, are not negative. Uh, and of course, I'm, I'm talking about digitization, I'm talking about decarbonization. Uh, I think both will will certainly uh, set a clear path to the future shape of our airport operation. And all of that, of course, innovation will be key. And it's the innovative solutions being presented by our world business partners and their special relationship with, with us, ACI, and with our airports, which I think is, is one of the positives of this, of this crisis. Today, this is our uh, second in a series of webinars looking at uh, innovation, innovative solutions being developed by our world business partners. Um, and I know that many of you who are joining today uh, also attended the first webinar we had back on the 22nd of, of, of June. Uh, so I think what, uh, what airports want to hear is the practical, tangible solutions that are in developments, the ones that are already uh, uh, available off the shelves. And today we'll be looking at uh, innovative and, and cost-effective solutions to restart airport operations after COVID-19. Uh, and that clearly the goal there is to improve uh, the operational performance of airports, uh, to adapt it to the new reality, uh, while at the same time, of course, trying to, to enhance uh, the passenger experience uh, by ensuring a, a smooth passenger flow. So we're delighted today to welcome uh, Brussels Airport Consulting, Eforsa, Genetech Europe, and Kone. Uh, each each of, of these world business will present to you today, and I'd like to thank them very much uh, for their time, for their continued engagement, and for sharing uh, their thinking uh, with, with us. Uh, with that, I think we, we can look forward to uh, stimulating our head and uh, the only thing that I have to do now really is to hand over to the most capable hands of our colleague and friend, Ruud Hummels, who is a member of the World Business Partner Advisory Board and Managing Director of TO70. Over to you, Ruud. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Olivier. Um, may I uh, ask those that are not speaking, uh, I also see some guests that have the camera on to switch it off. That's probably best for the recording. Um, and uh, as uh, Olivier said, um, this is a second uh, webinar. Uh, we had a quite a successful first webinar a fortnight ago with some 200 uh, attendees from over 100 European airports, big and small. Uh, and as such, we are very pleased to be hosting this second uh, World Business Partner webinar today. 
providing us as well business partners an opportunity to showcase our ideas, uh, products and services. And where the first webinar mainly focused on innovative IT solutions for passenger handling and crowd management. Today, uh, we have a wider focus on solutions for airport operations in the wake of the Corona pandemic. Uh, similar to uh, the first webinar, we very much encourage you to ask questions via the chat functionality in Teams. Uh, these questions will be answered by uh, the uh, different presenters during uh, the presentations. But I will also use these questions to uh, select some of those uh, for the Q&A after the presentations. Uh, please note uh, that the presentations uh, and the recording of this webinar will be shared afterwards. That will probably be uh, done tomorrow morning. Um, similar to last week, we have four World Business Partners to provide you with a short presentation. And we're starting today with uh, Mr. Bart Seuntjens, uh, General Manager at Interim at Brussels Airport Consulting. Uh, the floor is yours, Bart. Thank you. Thank you, Ruud. Everyone can uh, hear me? Yes. Yep. And my camera is indeed switched off. Yes. Um, good afternoon, uh, everyone. I'm pleased to share with you our convictions for the restart of airport activities and the way forward towards recovery where the main emphasis will indeed be on the balance between, on the one hand, efficiency, and on the other hand, passenger experience. Um, as said, this uh, presentation will be um, sent out afterwards. So with a challenging time slot of 10 minutes, I'm not going to cover all of these items. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick to the slides that I think are most important and also the messages that I would like to transfer with uh, indeed a focus on data driven management. At the same time, uh, I would also like to mention that the described techniques that we are using, we do that together with Ortec. Uh, it's our partner in terms of uh, optimizing our business and they are uh, part of our operation plan collaborators. Now, why are we having this seminar? Uh, if I will refer to Olivier and Ruth, it's clearly that we have and are still being touched intensively by the COVID-19 impact. As indicated in the introduction and shown in the graph, we see that uh, flight traffic and passenger numbers have been decreased dramatically. And so let's say the traditional modus operandi has been heavily disrupted or even completely halted in the last month. That impact on the airports has been translated into a drop of CAPEX projects, other prioritizations, and OPEX costs that are under continuous pressure. And yet, yet, of course, we are relieved that we are kind of back in business. But I think we are back in business in a new reality. And so the question is, uh, how can we on the one hand guarantee that passengers will feel safe and that they can travel stressless to the airport. So how can we uh, rebuild confidence with the passenger? How can we at the same time also guarantee that stakeholders are aligned in this new ecosystem? And thirdly, how can we also guarantee that the airport can indeed optimize its role as facilitator towards on the one hand the passengers, towards the employees and the partners, taking into account indeed the new COVID-19 health and social measures that have been implemented. Um, based on our five years experience already with the Airport Operations Center, we also believe that this proactive steering center will play a crucial role in the challenge that we are confronted with. As you see on this slide, uh, on the right side, there are two uh, different graphs. The, the, on the top, I'm not going to talk about it because I think that is past this. I really would like to focus on the tangible solutions that we uh, are bringing about with regard to, let's say, the operational recovery. Um, looking to our APOC journey, I think we have succeeded in integrating the three core processes, namely aircraft, passengers and bags, into an end-to-end -end passenger flow 
with the use of data centralization. And I think that's key when we talk about innovative solutions. The data uh, is, is key in order to bring this about. Of course, the daily operational alignment in the APOC with all the stakeholders has also created a culture by which we are acting together towards full recovery. Now, as you see on the right side, that new uh, reality uh, consists basically of three stages of recovery. Right now, uh, most of the airports are indeed in stage one, um, where basically we will be confronted with an increase of OPEX costs, and of course the revenues will still lag behind. So it's a costly stage, and the call for efficiency will be loud and clear. Optimization techniques in resource planning and op operational management will be key to restart the operations. Stage two, um, of course, we don't know how lengthy that period will be, but stage two will be the growing operations. Um, and we believe that in the growing operations period, we will be confronted with fluctuating demand. And so the question is from an efficiency point of view, how can we adapt the capacity? So in that stage, the focus should really be on the agile and flexible forecasting that will be key to match that demand. And then, of course, the last phase we call the steady operations, and all of us are looking uh, into that, that it's going to happen as quickly as possible. But if we are in that stage, we should be able to forecast and predict the operations because it will be key even in order to mitigate, for instance, capacity shortages. So we think that in terms of recovery these three stages, we should be able to, do, to uh, apply different optimization techniques, which are indeed uh, data driven. And these three techniques, uh, I've put them, they are on this slide number nine. Uh, these three, we think this is a continuous dynamic cycle that we have to apply, because on the one hand, the processes, they will be volatile. And so we should be able with these volatile processes that on the one hand we can capture them, that we take them into account, that we can forecast and simulate different scenarios. And so also uh, from that onwards, being able to optimize our operational planning. What does this mean in reality? And I just would like to go into each of these three separately. When you talk about the process changes, Yes, we think that we will be confronted with process changes, which basically means that more hurdles will be implemented. Um, take into account, for instance, what the impact will be on the passengers. Different initiatives have been implied. Social distancing, sanitary measures, temperature measure outside the terminal. And all of this may have an impact on queuing and so may also demand, for instance, additional personnel. In terms of the bags processes, we also see that there are many stakeholders involved. Infrastructure and capacity availability might be limited in the first phase, so how can we optimize this? And then from an aircraft perspective, of course, we think that the turnaround time will be uh, under pressure. And logically, it will be a more lengthy turnaround time than we initially had. So the question with the process changes is, how can we increase um, the maximum throughput or how can we at least optimize the maximum throughput and at the same time have an amount of resources minimum as possible. Now there are examples, uh, uh, Olivier said in the beginning you would like to have tangible solutions. There are examples, for instance, when we talk about process changes, we have been confronted with the fact that screening, the double lane has been reduced to a single lane, one single lane related to one detector. And so indeed, with this single lane, how have we been able to optimize that, uh, that process? Um, when I go further into forecast and simulation, that's the second element there that I would like to highlight. I said that there are different scenarios that we are confronted with. And so we believe that passenger segments are uncertain. We also believe that airline offerings uh, can vary. And this will have an impact that we should be able to capture from there onwards in order to um, maximize the demand towards capacity. The changes in passenger numbers will also have an impact, of course, on the back numbers. 
and air side capacity, what will be the impact on stands and runways? So flexible forecast models and predictive analysis with artificial intelligence based algorithms is what we would like to apply. And that should give us accurate answers in terms of capacity demands. There also, what example do we have? Uh, it's clear that, for instance, at screening, the order of resources at screening is crucial. And so with the different measures that we have been put in place, we know how we can, uh, so we, we capture them and we, ha we have been able from that moment onwards also to optimize the resources at screening by a machine learning model. And this model uh, is, is learning by itself, meaning that it's a flexible and data-driven model and it has been trained every week. And based on these data, new data, we have been able to minimize the resources of screening. The last one is really related to operational planning. And the question is, how can we effectively and efficient uh, uh, organize capacity planning? That is, of course, a complex puzzle, especially when you have to take many factors into account. For instance, look into the passengers that come to the airport. What will be the impact on the check-in desks? Check-in desks, maybe the future will be that it will be most online check-in and check-in desks are not necessarily anymore. Or what we have done or what, what we have been confronted with is at a certain moment that uh, from uh, an operational perspective, we had to organize an empty desk next to an operational desk. So thereby, let's say, the capacity was reduced. And so we not only changed this in a D minus two planning, but we also studied this in terms of the long term and find out at what moment, with of course traffic uh, being increased, at what moment we would have capacity issues. So this information is of course very important for our capacity manager. So once more, these three streams we think should be applied simultaneously. It's important for us in order to be able uh, to capture all the data. And of course, combined with artificial intelligence and optimization techniques, we think that with these three streams, we should be able to guarantee the right balance between efficiency and on the other hand, of course, the passenger experience because the passenger independent of the code or not, still will have his needs and his wishes towards their flow through the airport. This is it for now. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, uh, Bart. Right on time. Um, I now hand over to Bob Slay Slade from the French company A Force Air. Uh, Bob has over 40 years of experience in airfield operations, both in operational roles and as a consultant. Um, over to you, uh, Bob. <clears throat> Thank you, Ruud, and hello to everyone out there. Many thanks to ACI for the opportunity to present our solution for managing airside operations within the context of isolation and remote management. Today, I'm going to talk about the effects of COVID-19 relating to airfield operations management and what still has to be accomplished daily, whether on site or remotely, and how we can improve this situation. Social distancing relating to airfield operations teams and the coordination of working practices requires a huge amount of communication between individuals, management and departments for the airfield to remain operational and compliant. Working remotely is impossible for the majority of these people when the airfield is active, so physical distancing needs to be applied within the constraints of each of the departments. <clears throat> Managing operations remotely has become a complicated issue in respect of the new measures especially if the users are having to rely on established pre-COVID tools. This has proved to be problematic for many individuals and departments having developed their own methods or having purchased software solutions for their own specific purposes over many years. <clears throat> the airfield must maintain their operational capability and staff retain their competencies if they are to respond to the daily changes forced upon them by the current situation. 
even when they are temporarily inactive. <clears throat> Runways and taxiways need to be kept in peak condition for regulatory compliance. Wildlife presence has increased due to a reduction in disturbance and equipment still has to be checked daily and maintained. Allocation of work schedules and maintaining staff competencies continues. Anomalies must be dealt with and followed up. Procedural changes need to be updated, developed and communicated and documented and constantly managed. The remote management of these issues I've just mentioned presents us with a challenge in communications and coordination. The Forsair's expertise in the field of operations in close collaboration with our clients and coupled with our expertise in software development has allowed us to directly study and analyse the current situation of airport management systems for data and compliance across the world. As you can see on screen, some airports are still using very basic methods that require multiple visits to retrieve, collate, communicate and manage that data. COVID has highlighted the need for us to be able to work remotely and sometimes in isolation. We recognised early on in our research before COVID that working in departmental isolation was a common factor. COVID just exacerbated that problem. Now at the forefront of many minds is to look for methods of collaboration and communication across all departments. Common factors exist between virtually all airfield operations departments, whether it be fire service operations, wildlife hazard management, engineering and security with regard to record keeping. For instance, shift allocation and staff competencies, equipment maintenance and stock control, document management for regulatory compliance and audit purposes, and using statistical data for, uh, for this decision making. There's a lot of commonality, but I've only got 10 minutes here today. Our solution is to bring all of these operational recording needs into one adaptable software package for all operational departments to use. By doing this, we generate a widespread familiarity and interdepartmental collaboration with the benefits of a holistic view of the operation and options, if we wish, to drill down to the basics for decision making purposes. <clears throat> The advent of cloud-based software and mobile devices means that we can now work in real time. The benefits are that access is through URLs, running the application and maintaining the database. So no software installation is required these days. Application up updates are managed online, a guaranteed availability of services offered by providers. The data is safe and secure and fully traceable. Most importantly, applications can be used anywhere that has internet access. So we've looked at how the basics of a system should work, but are we just entering and storing data for regulatory compliance and communications purposes? We're compelled to do that, but that data should also provide us with more. And this is where the digital logbook excels. The process of data entry needs to be simple and adaptable. If an event occurs, it has to be recorded immediately on a device, a tablet, smartphone or a computer. By pre-linking parameters and communications requirements to each event, whether an emergency or an equipment failure, the user entry triggers any actions or communications requirements linked to that event. That might involve many actions and many people for a serious incident or few people for a minor maintenance need. Specific people would then be automatically alerted to events, if appropriate, by email or SMS. They can then access that information via a dashboard and take pro uh, appropriate actions. With the correct permissions, alerted users can join the logbook and enter any relevant information that will be stored chronologically within the system. The key point here is that we only enter an event or an anomaly once. We let the system com compile, communicate and manage that data for us. So what does the digital logbook look like? Uh, this is a screenshot of our dashboard covering all SI services in this view. 
Access to data needs to be relevant and show the key performance levels at a glance, either by department or all services if we wish, dependent on access levels. Event information is graded for the software presentation using a traffic light system. And we also show, it also shows customi customizable key performance in indicators. This screen shows maybe what a typical day would look like. So if the KPI is red, something's very wrong. This is what you see if things are going a bit pear-shaped. Uh, but you can see that at a glance. And also built-in communications would have alerted you to the event. The extraction of statistical data should be at the core of any system and not an afterthought. It gives us a reason other than compliance to enter data for our own use and efficiency. For example, you have a stock of DISA and your users have to log each application. Data management can monitor that stock and alert when a reorder is required. Statistical data will also provide a pattern of use. How much, where, through geolocation and when. The same logic can be applied to virtually everything we use or any action we take. Statistical data can be collated automatically and preset to specific requirements. It allows us to see recurring patterns such as high maintenance on specific items or to look at attendees rates over, over specific periods. This ability also allows us to simplify data gathering for audit purposes. So to conclude, COVID-19 should not affect our communications. In fact, it's encouraged many of us to improve them using modern technology. If physical presence is not possible, but management is necessary, social distancing or professional distancing need not be a barrier to running a smooth operation. We would advise that there are so many common requirements across the airfield operation that individual software packages to manage each department are not necessary and neither are they economically viable. By bringing these operations together under one umbrella, we increase our efficiency, our communications and information needs while being able to monitor progress immediately. We took a snapshot of E4SAIR software access on the graph on the right between 16th of March and June this year and compared it to aircraft movement shown in the left graph. The comparison showed an 89% uh, decrease in aircraft movements, but only a 49% decrease in our software access. And our customers were emphatic that drop in usage was either due to reclosure, uh, closure or reduced staffing levels, but they still felt, felt in control from a distance. And finally, another benefit of using digital logbooks is that they can contribute towards a carbon neutral accreditation, not only reducing paper levels, but unnecessary travel to meetings as the data requirements on, are online and fully accessible by all. Thank you for listening. My contact details are on the screen. Uh, we'd enjoy consulting with you if you think we can be of assistance. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, Bob. Um, first of all, I note that uh, different to the first webinar, there are very few questions coming in via the chat functionality. May I remind you all that uh, uh, we uh, love to see you ask questions and uh, presenters will take up uh, these questions throughout the webinar uh, and they also obviously feed into the Q&A which we still plan to do uh, at the end of this uh, webinar. Um, the next speaker uh, is Cheryl Stewart, uh, Airport Marketing Data Analyst at uh, Genetic Security Solutions Provider from France. Uh, Cheryl, uh, off you go. Thank you, Ruud. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me in this session. So today I'll be sharing with you some innovations in Genetech to help customers face this new normal. Without further ado, let's get started. My name is Cheryl Stewart, as Rude mentioned, and I'm the Airport Marketing Analyst in Genetech. And I'm joined by my colleague, David Leno, who's our Airport Practice Lead. He'll be available in the chat if you have any questions for us during the session. I've also included our emails here on the slide for your reference. 
Now, in the next 10 minutes, I'll briefly take you through who Genetech is, what are some key considerations for airports when they reopen, and I'll also introduce to you some solutions that we've developed in Genetech that can help airports get back um, on track as smoothly and swiftly as possible. Now, for those of you who don't know Genetech, uh, we're a software company specializing in creating connected solutions in security, operations, and intelligence with our main product, Security Center. Now, Security Center is the heart of our solution where it unifies a multitude of different sensors, devices, and systems like video cameras, access control for gate management, and license plate recognition for parking management, for example, to enable facilities like airports better manage processing and incident management all within one intuitive platform. Gentech has been servicing airports for over 20 years now with uh, more than 200 airport customers across the globe who are leveraging our solutions. Paris Airport, Schiphol Airport, uh, Rome Airport, and the new Istanbul Airport are just some of the few that we've worked closely with over the years. Now, here's just a quick look at the Security Center platform that I mentioned. Now, what are we delivering? Well, it's a comprehensive platform to manage an APOC or GSOC by unifying airport special systems and other IT infrastructure that you have in your airport for best uh, situational awareness and process management. So basically, it unveils new possibilities to manage new operational challenges to better protect your passengers and staff with existing infrastructure. So with uh, little to no financial impact, especially in times of difficult economical conditions like right now. With that said, considering the recent pandemic, uh, we've received multiple requests from our customers on ideas for solving some of the challenges that they're currently facing. You know, some even came with really great solutions. So we've been cooperating with them on new ways to use and repurpose our existing technology to serve their new needs. Now that led us to come up with a list of solutions that I've included here. First, we've developed a solution to monitor occupancy and physical distancing in a selected area. We're able to also keep track of potential exposures in work areas with proximity reports. We can leverage existing access control systems to control personal protective equipment access for inventory management. We're also able to share important evidence in the cloud, providing a touchless and secure solution for evidence sharing. We're also able to incorporate license plate recognition in managing overall passenger flow and experience in your airport. And lastly, we're able to integrate with thermal cameras while assisting operators in their problem res resolution process when dealing with passengers with um, elevated skin temperature. So today for this session, I'll focus on the first and last innovation mentioned for occupancy and managing incidents such as fever detection. So as we all know, with months of struggle with the COVID-19 situation, airports are now focused on ensuring a smooth reopening. However, there are many things that needs to be considered when airports reopen to make sure that their safety and operations are not at risk. Firstly, with um, all the different physical distancing measures that airports have put in place, you know, how can they ensure that these physical distancing measures are actually working? Secondly, with the constant changes in regulations and hygiene procedures for airports, how can the airports make sure that they're keeping compliant with the requirements while still ensuring that their staffs are constantly aware of the changes and are confident enough to take the right actions? And thirdly, we also know that budgets are tighter now with the current landscape. So how can airports repurpose technology investments beyond the pandemic and get more value out of their investments? I'll take you through two specific solutions that are able to address these issues. Our first solution is passenger flow analytics that helps validate hygiene measures that are in place to allow you to take corrective measures accordingly. What it does is that it analyzes the flow of passengers through airport specific widgets and dashboards to give you a better understanding of what is going on in your airport. It's able to count people, manage occupancy, 
measure physical distancing while still letting uh, while also you know still letting you know that a situation is getting out of hand such as a queues being built up in a specific area and triggering a process automation such as opening a new counter Passenger flow analytics is also able to ingest data from a variety of sensors from LIDAR to Bluetooth Wi-Fi to video analytics. And now as for measuring physical distancing specifically, it leverages 3D LIDAR sensors that assesses distance between all people in a specific area, allowing us to make sense of that data. Now, if you take a look at the widget visual here on the right, we can showcase by the hour the percentage of people abiding or not abiding to physical distancing measures uh, in a selected area, allowing you to not just validate hygiene measures already in place, but also take corrective actions such as uh, adding signage, making more announcements or increasing cleaning frequency in the area. Now, we also understand that merely investing in technology like LIDAR to only address current issues like COVID-19 might not be fully worth the money, right? You know, what if it's not relevant anymore? Or, you know, what if the situation changes? Now, the LIDAR system used for measuring occupancy and physical distancing that I mentioned just now is also among the most accurate and reliable perimeter intrusion detection sensors in the market. And, uh, with Genetech's Restricted Security Area Surveillance Module, as seen in this image here, we're able to leverage the positional data from the LiDAR sensor to control multiple cameras simultaneously and accurately identifying and tracking moving objects in an area of interest. Now, having said that, this allows you to have a multifunctional sensor to extract more value from your investment. And the second and last solution I wanted to bring up is Mission Control, Genetech's collaborative decision-making tool that helps you stay in control of procedural changes. We've seen uh, many airports now invest in new technologies such as uh, thermal cameras to better identify individuals with higher than expected skin temperature. But problems arise in terms of dealing with these specific passengers as regulations are frequently changing and being constantly aware of these changes can be really challenging. Now, during a recent panel discussion we had with um, our airport end user, a security director of one of the large US airports shared with us his struggle in terms of bringing new regulations to paper and having them signed while still needing to amend and add new ones every single day. Now with Gensec's mission control solution, it's able to guide the operator in a step-by-step -step resolution process according to a workflow that you can easily define, change, set, or reset directly in your security system based on you know, new rules that um, are compliant to your organization as well as the local governments, ultimately giving you more control over these changes. Now, for example, once a passenger is identified as having a temperature that's above normal, what are the next steps? Should this passenger be retested? Should they be quarantined? You know, uh, what if it's a false positive? Now, all these questions can be addressed in advance with mission control by having a predefined standard operating procedure, allowing your operator and on-premise personnel to react confidently knowing that they're assisted by a digitized SOP that takes them through the entire resolution process from incident detection with trigger to response. I've also highlighted in um, orange on the image here, to give you an idea of the step-by-step -step process that the operator will go through when dealing with incidents using mission control. And also lastly to add, mission control also provides an audit trail for managerial assessments in real-time dashboards for you to track how quickly a situation was handled, for example, you know, who has done what in that situation, and also the number of occurrence of a specific incident, giving you that kind of information to make a, a better judgment. Now, all the solutions mentioned are part of Genetech's comprehensive solution for airports called Security Center for Airports. So please visit our webpage or contact us directly for more information on each of these modules. And with that, I'll leave you to the next speaker. Thanks for having me today. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, next will be uh, Werner Ettrich, uh, Director Escalator Maintenance Business at Kony. Uh, from Germany. Uh, over to you, Werner.
Are you able to hear me? Anyone? Yes. OK, good. And then uh, I'm going to presentation mode. You are able to see my screen. <clears throat> so thank you for uh, having me here today. So I'm Werner Ettrich. I'm located in Hamburg, as you said. My current role today is I'm the director for escalator maintenance at the global level. And due to my role, I have been a frequent traveler for the last 10 years. And really, believe me, I do love airports which are well functioning. I spend so much time there. So today, I would like to take the opportunity uh, to share our view how we could improve the passenger experience in airports through safe, efficient, and hygienic people flow solutions, and to learn how we jointly can bring back the trust to the society, and for me, turning back as soon as possible to pre-COVID times. Just a quick note to Kona, we are one of the global leaders in the elevator and escalator industry, we were founded in Finland in 1910, and today we have somehow 60,000 people and we are serving more than 500,000 customers. When it comes to airports, we are working together with uh, a range of airports such as Helsinki Airport, Oslo, Munich, Heathrow, Muscat, Beijing, and many other more. Um, what I would like to touch today is um, to gain really the common understanding for passenger flow, in airports, then I would like to share what are our health and well-being solutions and what would be the benefits for airport operators and end users. And I would like to give a quick snapshot into connectivity and IA-based uh, solutions and, and how we could collaborate on those. Um, my last air travel was in the beginning of March when I took a vacation trip to the US. And when we started our journey uh, in Copenhagen, it already uh, was very visible that uh, it's not normal because only half of the normal passengers and everyone who knows Copenhagen Airport knows how busy it was. And when we came back uh, from, from Florida, it was even worse. We just came back when the lockdown for Europe was announced. Uh, there was only the people arriving, but no people departing. So quite scary. So in the meantime, uh, in the lockdowns, what did we learn and what did we apply as society, right? So we have very clear rules now for social and physical distancing. We are focusing much more how to wash the hands correctly and how to sanitize it. You have everywhere the sanitizer kits. Uh, we have learned not to touch our face. And in Germany, I even need to go when I'm shopping, I need to have a prote protection mask. So, so that happened in the meantime, the last four months. When it comes to an uh, airport journey, I would like to use my function today from a two perspective. One on the corner side, but I have been also a frequent traveler and uh, I'm looking also forward to come back uh, to the air, air travels. So what, how do I feel and how do I see as a passenger basically airports today? So when I check in, uh, that's quite simple. I use my app. When I go to the airport, normally I would go directly escalators and then up to the security gate. But here already the first question mark, is it now any more safe to touch the handrail on the escalator? Somebody could, you know, uh, but it is really safer to hold the handrail because I know the risk from the escalator. When you go to the security gate, uh, queuing up, what are they doing with my luggage? Who is touching it? Uh, and sometimes, you know, you get researched. Uh, how close does the person come to me? When you're after the security gate, I normally would then go to the lounge, right? Taking elevator. Again, can I take the elevator? Pushing the buttons. Who has pushed the button before me? Is it safe to do inside the car? I mean, who has been sniffing in there? And finally, when you go to the gate, again, taking decisions, elevator, or you go to the shopping, or, 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 or by the boarding gate, uh, queuing up again. So there's a lot of things happening in me time. Me as an end user, as a passenger, thinking, and then, of course, what can we do as an industry to help to bring confidence back to our passengers, to our customers in these situations? At Conan, 
we were launching a program which we called Health and Wellbeing Solutions. Uh, the first part was really how can we help to prevent the spread of the disease? And then the second part is, are we able to minimize the, the, in the journey um, the need to touch surfaces? And then we have, uh, of course, let's say equipments need to run, right? So how can we do that in those new times with less people on site and, and uh, different accessibility to sites? And then finally, in a way, how do we communicate back to our end users? so that we can rewin the confidence that it's safe to travel and safe to use equipments which are in the facilities. If I may start with the solutions we have been developing for our elevators, I would start with the elevator air purifier. Air purifiers are systems which basically are cleaning the air inside the elevator car. So first, you, you, you get the, the old air up, you're filtering from dust and particles. And the second part is we are using our UVC light solution with the photocatalyst system to clean the air for all possible bacteria and germs which are in there and then push the clean the air back to the car. A second solution which is also on the way and what we are using now for the, our new elevators are this anti microbial elevator walls, decorations, and the handrails. So we are using the latest technology so that even on the walls, if somebody is touching it, that it doesn't stick there. Then a quite smart solution is to reduce the touchy uh, on, the, on, the, on the push buttons. So we also have a solution which enables uh, uh, to call and use the elevator by a mobile app by using QR codes. And what I would recommend to all the airport um, um, operators, maybe to look into how you can limit now the um, numbers of passengers in an elevator car by reducing the load weight. And then what we of course also did to support the customers, we launched a range of stickers. So helping uh, end users, passengers to understand what are the do's and the don'ts in the journey when using the elevator. And for the uh, social distancing also where you will put basically uh, the distancing mark in front of the elevator so people understand and can apply to it. When it comes to escalators, um, I, would, I would start by the handrails. Uh, today there are already handrails available which are from the consistent antimicrobial. Uh, they are a little bit more expensive than the old, uh, let's say, rubber let's say handrails, but of course it's worthwhile to get those ones in uh, as they do not really take easy up uh, bacteria and other germs. It requires although that they are clean from time to time, so that it keeps the condition. You can't really prevent that somebody puts the ice cream on it. Then what we have done now, we introduced a uh, inbuilt UVC uh, handrail sanitizer system, where we basically use the ultraviolet light to disinfect the handrails, and the exposure of it basically helps uh, to reduce and inhibit the re reproduction of microorganisms. Uh, important on that solution is also that it doesn't really impact the lifetime of a handrail as those are quite expensive and also important the light is not exposed to passengers moving on the escalator. I would strongly emphasize in that call uh, we should not put uh, customers passengers to the choice touching or not touching a handrail it is absolutely recommended to hold the handrail when you take an escalator. There can always be an unintended stop on it, and that would basically increase the risk of incidents. And finally, also for escalators, we are producing this uh, distancing um, uh, stickers you can put on the inner decks. So three steps is our recommendation, and you are safe on the social distancing rule. And of course, also uh, signs on the balustrade, it's safe to use the escalator. Finally, 
I wanted to share with you how AI solutions, new digital solutions could help us in the future, bringing the new world and the old world together. Um, I guess we could do a webinar by its own for that topic, but uh, I want to share one case. We were working together with one airport operator before the COVID crisis, where we basically had the issue that whenever the equipment was stopped, it took 90 minutes, up to 90 minutes before it was put back to use. And uh, when we have connected the units, uh, we were basically able to find out that 90% of the cases are simple cases, misuse, or somebody dropped the luggage to the handrail inlet switches, and that normally turns off the escalator. By using the IoT technology and integrated that to the operator systems, basically we were able to bring it down to the 15 minutes, okay, depending on the size of the uh, airport, and it takes a while to reach the destination where the equipment is located. So basically there was a snapshot from me as a user and from a leading elevator escalator company. Thank you for your time. Thank you, uh, Werner. Um, May I ask the presenters to uh, switch on the microphones and cameras again? Um, we haven't seen any uh, questions come in. Um, I, however, do have uh, some questions. Uh, maybe following the order of the presenters, let's start uh, with Bart. Um, Taking into account uh, the data that you mentioned, uh, it seems uh, you've already made some progress with that in the past, uh, and I imagine you are dependent on uh, some of uh, the other stakeholders uh, uh, in the APOC. How easy or complex have you found it to uh, bring these efficiencies about? Uh, thank you, Ruud. Uh, it's true, I think that um, uh, fortunately, maybe due to the APOC, uh, we have been working with the different stakeholders and you can divide the stakeholders on one hand with, let's say, the commercial stakeholders and on the other hand, the compliance stakeholders together. Um, I th so I think we, we created a culture of working together, yet with the data uh, that we are currently applying and by which we do learn a lot, it's still a question of uh, sitting together with the stakeholders and making them understand that with these data, we're also having a positive impact on the resources that they are going to use. So I think uh, at this moment in time, uh, sharing data uh, has a benefit for, for each of the partners at the airport, uh, because uh, I think on the one hand, we will increase efficiency also for the partners, for them. And on the other hand, uh, logically, we should still um, focus very much on the passenger experience. So that's the way I think we are currently uh, going about this uh, together uh, and, and interactively discussing with the stakeholders on each of these uh, measures or each of the data decisions that we would like to implement. Okay, and um, um, thank you. Um, maybe uh, to you, Bob, you're also dealing uh, with uh, data in the application that you were showing. Um, how do you ensure that uh, the data entered into the system is actually compliant for uh, statistical use? Uh, thanks, Rud. Um, for our field operations and the requirement for audit, uh, we need to use a specific language. Um, ICAO's ADREPS taxonomy sounds a very posh word, but basically our software is, is fully customizable. So. We, when we set up with an airport, we um, enter this data in that's, uh, say, bird types or aircraft types or wind levels, everything like that requires a specific term in order to be reported back to those people, um, say, regulators or whoever. Um, so we use that fully compliant taxonomy, although it is customizable. Um, and the reason we use it, we set it up with the customers is because there's always mistakes in inputting data by hand. Far better to use uh, um, other methods. Um, but sometimes, um, in, the, in the main, that's not possible in the airfield. Um, so we build a taxonomy in there. When data is entered, we enter it through pick lists. So those pick lists are very specific. The words are spelled correctly. And that makes the data retrieval uh, more specific. And we can manipulate it with confidence, knowing um, that the terminology is right and the spelling is right. 
Thanks, uh, Bob. Um, I also have a, a question uh, still. Um, we are open to questions uh, for which you can use the chat box. Um, but maybe uh, a question that I had uh, for you, Cheryl, uh, looking at your presentation uh, regarding passive flow analytics uh, and also linking that uh, perhaps to the presentation by uh, Bart, uh, who was uh, talking about D minus one, D minus two. Um, do you also use your uh, solutions uh, in uh, forecasting or only in uh, identifying uh, any uh, particular issues that you might have at uh, present time? It's more of the present time and less of forecasting. What we do is we utilize the data and um, to make um, and using those data to make changes and actions changes accordingly. But from there, we can use the data to to see that, OK, at this time of the day, it, the, the character or the specific ways, uh, number of people during the day, there are more at this time, this time, so we can make those changes accordingly and with that prediction. But forecasting, no. Okay. Understood. Thank you. Um, I still uh, see no uh, questions coming in. My questions have been answered. Uh, perhaps I can uh, uh, ask the presenters whether they have any uh, follow on questions to any of the other speakers. Uh, if not, uh, we will uh, draw the webinar to a close. Um, and uh, for those that uh, are tempted of leaving uh, the webinar, we still have a couple of minutes uh, available if you wish. Uh, but I would also like to already uh, invite you for uh, yet another uh, World Business Partner webinar, uh, which will be held on uh, Friday the 17th of July at uh, 10 a.m. in the morning. Uh, we initially uh, uh, wanted to do uh, another webinar, but then perhaps host it uh, after the summer period. But um, as there has been a lot of interest in these webinars, uh, both from World Business Partners as well as from the airport members, we decided to host another one this side of summer. Um, so uh, hereby you are invited. Uh, any other questions some of the speakers might have for the other presentations? Then I would like uh, to thank uh, you uh, for uh, giving these presentations. Uh, it has again uh, allowed us uh, to link the World Business Partner program up with the uh, airport members in uh, ACI Europe. Um, so that has been uh, very useful again. Um, uh, for all of you, uh, stay safe and healthy uh, in these uh, difficult times for uh, most of us working in the industry. And uh, we hope to see you in uh, a fortnight. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, guys.